Hello, human beings. Welcome back to another episode of Did You Know? I am Jay Stedman. And did you know that you can make flow less scary by understanding how it consumes governor limits? Let's take a look. So here we are in a flow that I've created so that we can demonstrate how we can debug. Before we get into the debug itself, I want to talk a little bit about limits on the Salesforce platform. The Salesforce platform is shared by tons and tons of customers. It's a lot like an apartment building. And Salesforce, the company and the service, need to ensure that every apartment in the building receives hot water, gas, heat, electricity, trash service, etc. Our governor limits are set up so that we're able to maintain those for each and every customer. As admins, if you're using Flow, you're consuming these limits. In fact, you may have run into some errors related to these limits. A commonly seen error is too many SQL queries, limit 100, right? You can only have 100 SQL queries. So we're going to take a look at how we can view the governor limit consumption per element. We're also going to take a look at how we can see the governor limit consumption across the entire flow. So I'm moving here into our debug experience, and I'm selecting an opportunity record, and I'm going to run. It's in uh, rollback mode, so anything that happens to the database will be rolled back. Okay, great. So now that I'm in debug, I want to make sure that I can actually see my limit consumption. When I hit expand all, and I sort through my results, I just have tons and tons and tons of text, including something that looks really confusing and system generated. That's not what I'm looking for. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to access the options for our debug log, and I'm going to select show governor limit consumption, as well as our transaction boundaries. This is going to give me the information that I'm looking for. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit expand all a second time. And you can see that I've still got all of the results from before, but I'm going to close them one by one. So I don't need to look at how the interview started. I don't need to look at the start condition requirements. Instead, I'm going to take a look at my performance for this get records element. And you can see here that I have consumed one SQL query and I have obtained one out of 50,000 rows. So it shows me how much I've consumed and also what my total limit is. Now that's just for the get records element, which is the first pink element on the canvas. I also have an update records element. Let's see how that's performing. So underneath all of that system generated text, which isn't something that we need to worry about here, we can see that there is a DML statements, one out of 150, and DML rows, one out of 10,000. Again, this is showing me how this particular element is performing and what resources it's consuming. This can be particularly helpful if I'm going step by step in my flow and I want to make sure that each element is performant. We really want to make sure that we're using resources well as we build out our flow. But if I've got a larger, more complex flow, or if I want to see how the flow in total is consuming resources, I'm going to have to go somewhere else. So we're going to leave the flow experience and we're going to step into developer console to take a look at debug logs. Here we are in our developer console, and I'm going to set my debug logs and my log levels. So I'm going to pop up to debug. I'm going to move down to the bottom of this menu where it says change log levels. In the upper right hand corner, I'm going to select add slash change. Now these are all the different categories of debugging I can do from Apex to the database to workflow. We're focused on workflow. So let's not pay any attention to those other columns at the moment, and we can choose the level at which we want to uh, investigate. We want the finest level possible. It's going to give us the most detail. So I've selected finer, which is the uh, most detail available. And now we're going to go back into Flow Builder, and we're going to debug that flow again. When we return here to the Dev Console, we'll see a log has appeared. So it's important if you want to use Dev Console Keep it open as you are running your flows. So we've run. We can see here, yes, it has in fact run. Uh, if we want to take a look at our governor limit consumption and transaction boundaries, again, we can find that information here. Uh, but at this point, I'm more concerned with looking at my total resource consumption. I want to see 
all the way across the board uh, how many things are being used up. So our user's name is Addison Maisley. You can see here that we have uh, a new log. If I double click this log, it's going to take me into uh, a really fine tooth comb version of what was going on with that flow. Now there's tons of information here. Not all of that is relevant to us in this conversation. All you need to do is scroll down to the very, very bottom and you're going to see your total resource consumption from SQL queries all the way down to the number of jobs that you have in a queue. This is really important and really valuable information. Now I'm going to put a couple of links down into the description of this video so that folks can reference the uh, general limitations to flow, the transaction limitations to flow. There's information there that will tell you what each and every one of these lines means. But the important thing is, even if we don't know specifics, we want to make sure that we're not exceeding any of those limitations. So as we test and we run our flow, it's important for us to consider how these limits are being consumed. Uh, and you want to consider the volume of records you're processing. Now, there is one caveat I need to add to this conversation. There is a limitation for the number of elements that can be run during a flow. This is not something that is available either in the debug logs or in the debug experience in Flow Builder. This is admittedly something that's missing, and I would be remiss if I didn't point that out to y'all. Well, everyone, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and uh, learn with me on this. Did you know? Uh, I'm very excited to see you next time. Hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.